Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. I am live in San Diego. And I'm actually gonna, this video is gonna be a quick five minute video. We're gonna talk about the clinical trial landscape in Mexico. And I'm here with, I am in San Diego, with one of Tijuana's very own physicians. He's big into stem cells and all kinds of things. So, doctor, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I'm Dr. Gonzalo Jimenez. I work in Hospital Angeles Tijuana. And we have done a lot of clinical studies over there. So about, uh, about an 80 clinical trials, ranging from phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials, especially then with uh, chronic degenerative diseases and some CNS diseases, and a few cancer studies. And we're actually very, uh, very, um, hopeful that we're going to have more clinical studies as we see biotech co uh, companies are picking up their clinical trials. Yep, and we want to talk about that. So I know a lot of the big pharma is used to going to Mexico from the past years to do trials, but some biotech companies from the U.S. maybe, maybe they're considering doing some trials in Mexico, but they're not sure what the landscape is and the environment is for, from a regulatory perspective, from a patient recruitment perspective. Can you kind of talk to us a little yes, bit about Yes, uh, we have done, uh, especially with UCSD, University of California, San Diego, uh, and, and, and of course, actually for clinical trials, administration from Latin America. So many of the U.S. companies are seeing that uh, Mexico, and especially that Mexico or Latin America, uh, they're picking up steam. They're picking a lot of clinical trials because of the cost, especially. You can down, uh, you can lower the cost from uh, thirty percent to seventy percent. So that uh, for starting biotech companies, a very important uh, route to get into clinical trials, especially for phase one, some phase two clinical trials, or phase one, phase two clinical trials. Their regulation in uh, Mexico is quite the same as United States, it's the same uh, FDA, it's called COFEPRIS, and you have all the same regulation that you will expect in the United States, so you have to have an OV, you have to apply, it has to go to Mexico City, it's very centralized, and after that, you, you they give you the, the, the start uh, 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 page to, to, to start your clinical trial, and then you re can recruit uh, your patients. Uh, Mexico, fortunately, uh, where I'm from, it's from Baja California, it's border from San Diego. We, there's big cities, so it's, it's cities that actually, if you count the people that are from T1 and San Diego, it's about 9 million. So we have 9 million people that we can, uh, we can, uh, they can join. Uh, our, huge population. Our, yeah, huge population that can join our clinical trials uh, in any of the phases. Okay, and we have, we do a lot of uh, clinical trials. The most, the most common type of uh, medication there are now uh, picking up steam in biotech companies. There are heart problems, uh, asthma problems, and diabetic problems because of, of the obese population. And in the United States, they have a lot of chronic degenerative diseases. So, part of our collaboration, our eventual collaboration, will be my interest in stem cell research. And obviously, I see that as an opportunity there, and uh, we can share best practices back and forth. Yeah, of course. Uh, so that's one of the things we look forward to. All right, so pretty much the same as the U.S., except uh, cheaper. Uh, yes, pretty much the same, and, and lower cost. And, and from stem cells, the difference that we have uh, from the United States is that right now, stem cell research is like the United States. Uh, but like in Japan or South Korea, if you have a biologic that is safe, it's proven, it's not tampered with, with genetically, or, or you use any animal serum, you can apply it. So that's why right now, uh, many uh, like my clinic is starting to uh, give therapies or, or uh, stem cell therapies to patients. They have uh, mostly chronic degenerative diseases, CNS diseases, uh, and it also includes arthritis, osteoarthritis, diabetes, ischemic, heart failure. So many of the diseases that you would expect uh, that have uh, the stem cell will have an impact uh, immun immun because of the immune modulation they have. So they can uh, lower inflammation. So those uh, chronic degenerative diseases are very well treated with uh, an adjuvant therapy in with stem cells. Yeah, and as we wrap up, you were saying the next three years for stem cell research, um, we're gonna start seeing these things as treatments and therapies more in the mainstream. 
Yeah, sure, because uh, from the 49 companies that we saw in uh, the STEM meeting on MESA, there are right now an ending phase one, phase two clinical trials starting phase three. So I don't think there's uh, much more uh, to say for FDA to approve uh, therapies, uh, many therapies for, uh, for knee problems, for heart problems, for ischemic problems, uh, because there, there, there really are, there's a lot of information. So I don't think, uh, I think three or four years, we'll see uh, the revolution, as they call it, uh, starting in USA. Awesome. And we'll do follow-up interviews as we meet again. And uh, thank you for your time, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.